Have you ever felt stuck trying to loosen up your painting style without sacrificing realism? Or maybe you're struggling to capture the essence of your subject with confidence and with bold brush strokes. If so, this video is for you. Today, I'm thrilled to share with you my top four steps for creating loose and expressive portraits in oil. As you watch, if you realize you're tired of trying to DIY your way to looser painting, and if you have a particular style of loose painting that you want to achieve once and for all, check out my free masterclass on loose portraiture that's linked down in the description. It shows you how to tailor these steps to achieving a crystal clear goal with your artwork. Now let's dive into the four steps to loosen up a portrait without sacrificing the likeness or the realism. Starting with step one, which is to choose your subject wisely. The first step is to choose your subject, or maybe more accurately, your reference wisely. The truth is, some painting references just create an uphill battle for you on the canvas, while others will set you up for relative ease and success. So what are those qualities that we need to look for or avoid? In my experience helping hundreds of painters to loosen up their portraits, I found that it's typically way easier to loosen up when your subject has been lit in a way that it is designed to be painted. What I mean by this is choose reference with clear light and shadow patterns. When you see a subject and you can literally point to the spot on that reference where the shadow ends and the light begins, and you can see this breaking up the features of the face more evenly, it makes it much easier to control your proportions, your values, and your colors because the shadows are there to help you make sense of the image. If you have no idea where to start with this, I would try a three quarter view pose and probably one with Rembrandt lighting. That is lighting with one side of the face, probably the far side in a three quarter pose, fully in the light. And then the other half of the face is mostly in shadow, except for a triangle of light that appears on the cheek. Here's an example of Rembrandt lighting in action from one of Howard Lyon's reference packs. Incidentally, I used one of his references for this painting that you're watching me make here. So I just want to say thank you to Howard and to shout him out. I've linked his Gumroad where you can purchase his reference packs below in the description. I find that these are a great resource for this exact challenge that I am talking you through as far as choosing a great subject or great reference. There are so many great images to choose from that have all been so thoughtfully composed and lit so you can stop getting tripped up because you're working off of candids that you shot on your iPhone. I, we've all been there. Don't worry if you're guilty of this. Here's one other benefit to using a reference pack. You're not gonna be so attached to the subject. If you're not particularly attached to the likeness or making sure it looks like a particular person, it can be much easier to loosen up because the viewer won't know that you weren't really trying to capture that specific expression or they won't know that the subject's nose didn't quite look like that because you probably aren't gonna show them the reference and they probably don't know who the model was. They're just gonna see the final painting. And one final note on choosing a subject for loose portraiture. Be cautious with younger, more feminine faces as they can be more challenging for loose painting. The reason is that the younger or more feminine the face is, the softer the forms of the face tend to turn. And the more you will be tempted to blend and blend and blend until the painting no longer has a loose feeling. Now, with time and experience, this gets much easier or else I wouldn't be painting a woman for this particular video. But when your aim is to just get started loosening up, you can probably set yourself up for success by choosing a model whose face has sharper plane changes or harder lines. Typically, that means an older, more masculine face to paint. Now on to step two, which is to simplify your palette. If you want to loosen up, less is more when it comes to color. Stick to a limited palette so that you can create harmony and avoid muddiness. So my studio palette includes a few different browns, yellow ochre, ultramarine, viridian, and titanium white. I will occasionally add touches of permanent rose or cad yellow light or maybe cad lemon as needed. 
usually just on the lips or maybe the cheek. But by sticking with mainly earth tones plus my blue and green just to tone those down further, it's much easier to worry less about color. And if I don't make a mess with color, I can spend less time reworking and tightening up my brushwork. All right, simple enough. So let's go to step three, which is to block in with big shapes and beautiful brushwork. My secret to painting portraits loosely, I think of it as a game. A game to make literally every mark as beautiful on its own as it can be. Bonus points if I can establish my entire block in that way or look at the painting and be able to call it done when I'm still at the block-in stage because every stroke I made was aesthetic, accurate, and interesting. Do I succeed in this game all of the time? Literally never. Every painting I make has brush strokes that I would do over or places where I just wasn't being mindful enough or I was rushing to get to the next step of the painting. But I challenge myself to always try to get a little bit better than I was the day before, specifically by trying to start off with intentional brush marks that look beautiful to me from the very first one. The more beautiful and complete the painting can look with each brushstroke, the more beautiful and loose the end result can be. Focusing on capturing the essence rather than every tiny detail for success at this stage. Remember, less detail can often say way more. To that end, in addition to trying to make each brushstroke beautiful in its own right, I try to focus on the big shapes. I hold off on painting an eye for as long as I can and instead try to capture the simple shape of the entire eye socket. Or I eschew painting an ear and instead simply suggest the blush of color that goes there. When in doubt, step back and take in the painting as a whole and challenge yourself to find the biggest thing that needs fixing right now in order to make the painting come together. And I literally mean the actual biggest, not like metaphorically the most important thing, but the largest shape that you can fix to make the painting more accurate. Chances are this is not going to be an eyelash or the highlight. Chances are it won't be an eyelash or a highlight. It'll probably be placing one of those big shadow shapes in a slightly more accurate spot. When those things are working, you'll find that the painting looks like it could be finished even though you've only just finished your block in. And that's a genuine asset when you're trying to loosen up because a lot of us have great energy in the block in, but the longer we go, the tighter we get. So if the block in looks great, you're 90% of the way to the kind of loose painting that you're going for. Now, the fourth step to loosen up portraits is to focus on your values. Specifically, focus on working from dark to light. Now, this isn't a formula for every single portrait, but when you want to make a loose painting breakthrough, I found that this approach of working dark to light tends to be most intuitive or it sets people up for the most success. For example, on most of my portraits, I start with either a light wash to tone the canvas or I start with a plain white canvas and either the plain white canvas or the wash acts as a placeholder for the lights. Then I can proceed to start the actual portrait itself by laying in my biggest, darkest shapes. Once those are actually established accurately, I gradually progress through lighter and lighter values, cutting into that area that I had reserved for the lights. This approach allows the painting to look cohesive the entire way through because the overall value relationships should be relatively correct no matter where you are in the process. Now to recap, the four steps here are to one, choose your subject wisely, then make sure you're simplifying your palette, then block in with big shapes and bold, beautiful brush strokes, and then focus on a logical progression of your values. If you found these helpful and you want a start to finish guide on making loose paintings that you are proud of, go ahead and sign up for my free masterclass. The link is in the description. And I would love to hear about your loose painting breakthroughs or your loose painting questions in the comments below. So go ahead and tag me in the comments so I can see what breakthroughs you've been having or help you out with the challenges you're stuck on. And until next time, happy painting.